Alright, we are here in beautiful sunny Florida, and today, people, we are going to be breaking down UFC 208 Holm versus Day Rondami for the inaugural UFC Women's Featherweight Championship. And, you know, when it comes to um, pay-per-view standards, I really don't think this card lives up to the expectations. You know, they, they did the best they could. Uh, overall, this is still a great card. There's... Some really great fights on here. I mean, I wouldn't miss this card for the world. There's some great stuff on here. A lot of great betting opportunities. But um, doing some shameless uh, plugs here, man. I am going to be doing a, um, a roundtable breakdown with the same guys as last time, the MMA Prophet and Rockstar Z. And that will be on Thursday night at 7 p.m. And that will be on the MMA Prophet's channel, not my channel. We're going over to Greg's channel on this one. Um... What else, man? Uh, I did mention, um, I did do a, a Hardcore's Delight episode. I put that up yesterday. So if you're into uh, the regional scene of MMA, if you watch stuff like Bellator, like LFA, go check that out. I think you'll like that. Um, I, and I did mention that I did gain, like, what, 50 subscribers in, like, the last two weeks. So thank you guys all so much. I really appreciate that. My viewership's going up. I'm getting, like, 500 views for each one of these I do. Really fucking awesome. I can't believe you guys would watch me talk MMA, but it means a lot. But uh, <laughs> getting into this card, man, let's uh, do it. Well, I will give you guys a uh, recap of my uh, of uh, my betting for uh, last weekend's in case you didn't watch my uh, Hardcore's Delight. So for uh, UFC Houston, I did have a very, very small profit of .58 units, which, you know, isn't a whole lot, but a profit is a profit, so I am still happy nonetheless. But moving into this card, man, I'm feeling confident. I got nine plays as of right now, and I am going to have a tenth, of course, with my fuck it parlay of the week when more props drop. Um, but yeah, man, let's get into this card. I'm, I'm excited to talk some of these fights. So for the prelims, I am going to go over them pretty quickly. Like I said, I'm going to go over them more in depth with that video with uh, the MMA Profit and Rockstar Z. So starting out with the first fight here, man, we got Rick Glenn, minus 200, taking on Felipe Nova, plus 170. So this is a very, very tough fight for me to call, actually. Um, I'm still struggling on my pick. I'm most likely going to change it. We'll see what happens, but... um. I, I actually came really close to taking the shot on Felipe Nover at uh, plus 175. What is it? He's plus 170 now. But, yeah, man, I just decided to pass. I, I really don't trust the guy with my money, honestly. But uh, I do think the line is pretty off. Um, both guys here, they're strikers. I'm expecting a close three rounds of striking. However, Glenn was taken down quite a bit by Evan Dunham. And if uh, if Felipe Nover gets uh, Rick Glenn down, he does have that BJJ black belt. So I... I do see him being quite dominant there. But, um, man, my official pick is going to be Felipe Nova via a 29-28 decision. Betting-wise, I can't make a play on Nova. Just can't do it. But uh, I do think the lines are off. You know, minus 200 for a guy that doesn't have a UFC win yet. Eh. I, and Glenn really is not too impressing to me so uh, i do think the line's off but no play on uh felipe nova but i do have the over two and a half rounds in a parlay but moving on here we do got roan carnero plus 225 taking on ryan lafleur minus 265 so i'd say this is the fight on the card i'm looking forward to the least um i am interested to see what uh, lafleur's game plan will be here you know if he wants to use his uh, wrestling offensively take roan down and safely grind him out while avoiding the subs or if he wants to use his wrestling in reverse keep it standing and strike with carnero or i do think he has an advantage you know um, LaFleur's Le striking has come a long way, but, um, you know, I like LaFleur here, um, either, either way, whether he wants to use his wrestling, uh, offensively or defensively, uh, like I said, he does have to be careful of Holon's sub game, because it is quite dangerous, but I do think this will be a relatively easy win for Ryan LaFleur here. My official pick is a 30-27 Ryan LaFleur decision. Betting-wise, I am going to pass on LaFleur. I think the line is just a little too too high. I don't want to pay minus 265 for Ryan LaFleur, especially when he's 
facing a uh, dangerous sub submission guy like uh, Juan Carnero. However, I do have the over two and a half rounds also in a two unit parlay here. Of course, we are going to be talking about all nine of my plays at the end, so stick around for that. But moving on here, this fight does not have odds just yet, but we do have uh, Marcin Tybora taking on Justin Willis. And uh, man, I think this is just going to be a bludgeoning, in my opinion. I, I don't think Willis will have anything for Tybora here. I mean, the striking is not even close. Tybora is just a very good striker. You know, he's coming off that brutal KO win over Vic DePesta. Um, I actually was going to bet Marcin Tybora against uh, Derek Lewis. I was pretty confident in that. That fight got scrapped, never made again, is what it is. However, I, a little sneak peek, I am going to be betting, uh, well, I do have the bet on uh, Travis Brown. I took uh, two units on Travis Brown against Derek Lewis. But anyway, man, um, I do think... Um, Justin Willis, his best strength is his wrestling, but Marcin Tybora has shown pretty goddamn good takedown defense in the UFC, man. He was stuffing takedowns from uh, Tim Johnson and Victor Pesta, and Tim Johnson, I think, is just miles above Justin Willis, so... Also, Willis coming in here on short notice, first UFC fight, I just think this has Marcin Tybora written all over it. We'll have to see what the line's going to be. Uh, if it's less than, like, minus 170, I'm going to have to take a shot on Marcin Tybor. I'm very confident in him here, but it is heavyweights. You never know. I'm sure Justin Willis hits hard. He does have a couple knockouts on his record. But uh, betting-wise, yeah, no odds out for this fight yet. But uh, first-round KO for Marcin Tybor is my pick. Moving on here. Very excited about this one, man. Uh, this is the last fight I did tape study for just very recently ago. But uh, we got Jared Brooks, the newcomer, coming in on short notice, minus 110, taking on Ian, Uncle Creepy McCall, minus 110. So awesome fight here, man. Um, finally, Ian McCall will be back in the octagon after all those pullouts. And, man, he's got a tough cat in front of him on Saturday. Jared Brooks is no joke. I love everything this kid does. He's super well-rounded, super fast, super explosive. It was just a pleasure to watch this kid fight. I can't believe I've never heard of the dude before. He's just, he's so good. I don't know how he wasn't on that uh, Tough 24 season. Well, I guess, I mean, was he a champion? No, I, I mean, I guess he wasn't a champion, so I guess that's why he wasn't on it. But I'd take him against a majority of the dudes that were on that season. But, uh, man, um, also worth noting, this kid has got a great record. You know, 12-0 and as a pro, 3-0 and as an amateur, and has good wins on his record too, man. He's got a 25-minute decision win over Abdiel Velasquez, who's no joke. He fights over in Titan FC. So I think this dude, Jared Brooks, he's the truth, man, and I can't wait to see what he brings. Uh, even if he does lose this fight, um, I do see a very bright future for him in the UFC. And then Ian McCall, on the other hand, he's got that uh, elite-level experience. However, I do think the game has passed him by quite a bit, and this is his first fight in two years. He always talks about all these injuries he has. He can't even make a closed fist. Um, he was talking about retirement. So my official pick here is a pretty damn confident 30-27 Jared Brooks decision. Betting-wise, I just put 1.1 units on Jared Brooks at minus 110 to win one unit. I would have more on him, but it, this is still a short-notice debut against uh, a very experienced fighter. So, um, yeah, man, Brooks is the pick. Brooks is the bet. Um, but moving on here, man, we got uh, Nick Lentz, plus 200, taking on Islam Makachev, minus 240. So, um, I started out before tape study actually looking at a underdog play on Nick Lentz. Um, at that time, I was looking at plus 155, and I was like, eh, should I take the shot there? Now he's up to plus 200, but... After tape study, I just believe this is Makachev all day long. I think the line right now is right, Makachev minus 240. Um, I just I haven't seen anything from Nick Lentz that shows me he'll be able to stuff takedowns from Islam or get back up even then. Um, I do think uh, Lentz is tough enough to survive a finish, but I just, you know, I love Makachev here. Um, even if Lentz can uh, somehow keep it standing, um... I think, uh, you know, I would give Lentz a slight advantage there, but, you know, it's close, 
and uh, Lentz doesn't really have uh, the finishing ability on the feet. So, um, you know, people talk about Mak I've seen a couple people mention Makachev's chin because of the Adriano Martins knockout, but Adriano Martins is no joke. He's a great striker, just levels beyond Nick Lentz, and Martins actually has big power. You know, Nick Lentz is coming up from uh, 145 a couple fights ago. Makachev is the bigger guy here. So overall, man, my official pick is a pretty damn confident Islam Makachev 30-27 uh, decision. Betting-wise, I do have Makachev in a parlay, and I also have the over two and a half rounds in a parlay. Like I keep saying, stick around to the end, and I will go over my nine plays. We're moving on here to my most confident pick of the card. We've got Wilson Hayes minus 600, taking on Uka Sasaki plus 450. So, man, just a complete mismatch here. Um, it's so crazy, man, that Wilson Hayes, he was supposed to fight for the title at UFC 201, and Demetrius pulled out, and they gave Wilson uh, Hector Sandoval, who he subbed in the first round, and now we see how good uh, Hector Sandoval is. Just came off a very good win over uh, Freddie Serrano. And now they give uh, Wilson Hayes... Uh, Olka Sasaki, who is not very good in my opinion. Um, Sasaki, all he's really got going for him here is his size. You know, he's a huge flyweight. He has a seven-inch reach or seven-inch height advantage on uh, Wilson here, but I don't think that'll matter, man. Wilson is just so much better on the feet, so much better on the ground. I can think. I think he can finish wherever it goes. You know, I don't believe he has a TKO or KO in the UFC yet, but if you look at that uh, finish over uh, Scotty Jorgensen, he um. He subbed him right after getting that amazing-looking uh, body kick. You should have seen, look up pictures of uh, Scott Jorgensen's body after uh, that fight, man. Wilson Hayes, he's got some powerful-ass kicks, man. And, um, you know, Sasaki being the taller guy, I could see Wilson Hayes just letting him up with leg kicks if uh, Sasaki can keep it standing. So I just love Wilson Hayes wherever this fight goes. Um, you know, I do think that... Um, I, I just think Wilson... Uh, I like him on the ground here more than anything. I do think a uh, submission is more likely than um, a knockout. But my official pick here is going to be Wilson Hayes via a first-round submission. I do have Wilson in a couple parlays. And I actually have one unit on the under two and a half rounds at plus 125, man. Um, you know, um, shout out to Best Fight Picks. I think I just saw him tweet today that, like, I think it was like uh, Oka Sasaki's last seven fights have been under two and a half rounds. You know, he's a very wild guy. He leaves himself open for stuff. And Wilson Hayes is a guy that can absolutely capitalize. Wilson Hayes for a 125-pounder. He's got great finishing ability. Love that bet on the under there. And I love Wilson Hayes in a couple parlays. But moving on here to the uh, prelim headliner, we got Randy Brown minus 120 taking on Bilal Muhammad plus 100. So great fight, man. Here, I, you know, I think I, I like Brown in this one. Um, <clears throat> he was originally supposed to fight George Sullivan, and uh, Sullivan pulled out. So in comes Bilal Muhammad, and I don't think that's a great, uh, such a great idea for Bilal. You know, he just got KO'd cold in his last fight, and um, that was only three months ago, and. Randy Brown is just no joke, you know, he's a huge guy, he's becoming lethal, and he's just, he's just improving altogether everywhere, pretty fast too, I mean, he looked great last time out against Brian Camozzi, I actually bet Brian Camozzi is the underdog there, but, um, you know, Bilal's path to victory here is obviously the wrestling, but I like Randy Brown to keep it standing, man, and then, um, I like him to piece Bilal up at range, you know, use those jabs, and then... In the clinch, where I think a lot of this fight can take place, um, I like Brand Randy Brown there to light Bilal Muhammad up with uh, elbows and knees. So my official pick here is Randy Brown via a first-round TKO. And I do have Randy Brown in a two-unit parlay with Wilson Hayes. But moving on to the main card here, we got um, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Minus 465, taking on Jim Miller, plus 370. So I love, love Dustin Poirier here, man, ever since the fight was announced. This is my biggest play of the night. Just going to come out and say I put uh, 3.8 units on him back when uh, he was minus 190. I got really lucky getting on that one uh, nice and early, but... 
getting to the matchup, man, I really just think Dustin Poya, he's better everywhere. He's much younger, much faster, much more athletic. Just he has the advantage everywhere here, man. I just I have a hard time seeing Jim Miller win this fight. I, I don't see a path of victory for him. Um you know, and usually when Jim Miller fights these younger, faster guys, he at least has an experience advantage, but not here, man. Dustin Poya has been around the damn block and he's had what, at least fifteen UFC fights by now, so not much to say here, man. I love Poirier wherever the fight goes. Um, like I said, I, I really have a hard time seeing a path to victory for Jim Miller. And I like Jim Miller, man. But um, ultimately, I do see Dustin Poirier ending this one on the feet with some big strikes. So my official pick is Dustin Poirier via a first-round TKO. Betting-wise, I got 3.8 units on Poirier, like I said. But moving on here. We got Glover to Shara, minus 165, taking on Jared. The Killer Gorilla, Cannoneer, plus 145. So I love this fight, man. Um, fun stuff here. You got the uh, veteran former title challenger, Glover to Shara, taking on the rising contender, Jared Cannoneer. And it's interesting stylistically as well, man. Um, Cannoneer obviously has some huge power and. Glover just got KO'd in 13 seconds in his last fight, um, and he does get hit quite a bit. However, I do think Glover's wrestling will be the difference here. Uh, Glover's got some underrated wrestling. You know, he's taken down some good guys and held them down. And Cannoneer, he got taken down a few times by Ian Kutalaba in his last fight. So I just love Glover's chances to get it to the ground, and I love his chances to get a submission as well. Obviously, he's a great grappler, so... Um, fun fight, man. Uh, I can absolutely see Jared Cannonier going out there and getting the KO, but I can absolutely see Glover going out there and getting that submission, so um, I think you're bound to see a finish here, man. I think I'm going to have uh, Glover Cannonier doesn't go the distance in my fuck it parlay of the week. We'll see how uh, the lines look on that. But my official pick here is Glover to share V, a first round submission. Betting-wise, I'm passing on either guy. Don't quite want to take the shot on Cannoneer, and I definitely don't want to take uh, a bet on Glover to Shara when, uh, you know, I I think the price is a little too high on him, and Cannoneer has that big power. You know, he's a rising contender. You just never know. This fight, it's a little hard to get a good read on this fight, a very confident read, I should say. But, um, yeah, just betting-wise, it's a pass for me, but I'm most likely going to have the doesn't go the distance there. But moving on here... We got Tim Boach plus 400 taking on Ronaldo Jacare Souza minus 500. So strange matchmaking here, man. Um, it, it seems like Jacare was just inches away from a title shot. You know, he was supposed to fight Luke Rockhold in November, and now here he is fighting Tim Boach, who um, you know, he's been on a quite a roll himself, picking up two straight um upset knockouts, but um. Stylistically here, man, I mean, it seems pretty obvious that this should be Jacare all day long. You know, he's better just about everywhere except for the wrestling, and all he really has to worry about is Boach's power. You know, um, you know, sure, Boach has the wrestling advantage, but w what's he going to do? Take Jacare down and be on the ground with him? Um, Boach's way to win this fight is to use his wrestling in reverse and look for that big bomb, but um, even if he can keep it standing, you know, Jacare's striking has improved greatly over these last few years, and uh, he can absolutely hold his own on the striking. But honestly, man, I do think Jacare can take Tim Boach down and sub him with relative ease. Um, I see uh, a little bit more dominant of a, uh, a little bit more dominant version of the uh, Boach versus Lighties fight. So uh, my official pick here, man, is Jacare via a first round submission. But betting wise, uh, it's a pass for me, man. Um, price on Jacare is just. It, I mean, it's high, man. It's well-deserved, but I don't know if I want to pay minus 500 against a guy who has big power like Boach, a guy who has incredible comebacks like Boach. So this is kind of just an easy pass for me, man. Um, I, I don't really want to take the minus 500 here, although I am pretty confident in him. But moving on to a couple of fights I'm very excited to talk about. We got the co-main event here. We got Derek Brunson, minus 145, taking on Anderson Silva, plus 125. So, um, man, um, th this fight kind of feels like the main event to me, honestly. Uh, I really, really like this fight. It's good matchmaking. You know, you got the GOAT, Anderson Silva, fighting probably only one of a couple top 10 guys he's actually got a decent shot at beating just because of the way Derek Brunson leaves that chin up in the air. 
However, man, I am pretty confidently favoring Derek Brunson here. You know, um, when it comes to the striking, sure, it's close. Uh, Anderson is the more technical striker. However, can he take the power of Brunson? You know, um, even if he does, even if Brunson does leave that chin in the air, um, you know, will uh, or even if Derek Brunson doesn't leave that chin in the air and uh, he, you know, he strikes smart, um, you know, actually hits Anderson Silva with some good shots, will Anderson Silva be able to absorb and capitalize like Whitaker did? Or is Anderson Silva going to go down like Uriah Hall did, like Sam Alvey did, like Rowan Carnero did? Um, you know, I favor Anderson Silva not being able to handle the power, speed, and athleticism of Brunson. Um, but honestly, man, I, I don't think Derek Brunson, um, I, I don't think he leaves his uh, chin in the air for the taking uh, again this time. You know, he's not a stupid dude. Uh, he knows it fucked him in his last fight. Uh, I have a hard time seeing him make that mistake again. Well, who knows? You never know. Um, but, you know, if Brunson decides to wrestle with Anderson, th that all doesn't even matter, in my opinion. Uh, I don't see Anderson Silva being able to defend takedowns, and I don't see Anderson Silva being able to get back up constantly. Um, now, Brunson does have to be careful on the ground, but, I, I, you know, I think he plays it safe and just grinds him out safely there, avoiding the submissions. Um, you know, even if he does get a little reckless on the ground... You know, when was Anderson Silva's last submission win, and who was it against? UFC 117 against Chael Sonnen, a very submittable guy. So, I just love Brunson here, man. It's just been a gigantic gut pick since uh, the fight was announced. Very confident in Derek Brunson. And uh, my official pick is going to be a Derek Brunson first round TKO. A decision wouldn't surprise me if he just grinds Anderson out. And betting-wise, I do have two units on Derek Brunson at minus 145. So moving on to the main event here, man. We got Jermaine Durandamy, minus 125, taking on Holly Holm, plus 105. So here we go, man. Um, I love this fight uh, so much. You know, I saw that it is getting a bit of hate, but I, I think that's really only because of it being for the 145-pound title. But um, stylistically, it's amazing. I mean, yeah, you know, if this were just a normal 135-pound fight without the 145-pound title, you know, this fight would have such a more positive view, um, in my opinion. People would be talking a lot more positively about this fight, being a lot more excited about it. But uh, personally, I'm glad it's at 145 pounds. I'm glad they have to cut uh, less weight. I expect to see a better version of both women here. Um, but how they match up, I got a confident uh, read on this fight, man. I have a strong stance here. Um, you know, maybe I am missing something, but I really, really like Jermaine Delrand to me here. Um, so obviously, both women are amazing strikers, but I just think Jermaine is a few levels above Holly's striking, in my opinion. You know, she's got way more tools offensively and defensively. She's got a size advantage, reach advantage, and a youth advantage. Also, she's shown more finishing ability than Holly Holm. Um, I, I just think um, Holly, she's just going to have a, yet another night, uh, a, another uh, frustrating night, finding her range once again against a um, another striker with more tools, just like uh, in the last fight against Valentina, another kickboxer that had more tools than her, kind of made her look silly just countering her face all night long. And, um, and, and that fight was against a smaller woman in Valentina, whereas this fight is against a much larger Jermaine Durandamy. So, striking advantage, I give um, to uh, Jermaine Durandamy very confidently. Now, um, I do maybe slightly favor Holly Holm on the ground, but I don't think she gets it there. Um, she's no takedown artist. If she wants to take down Jermaine Durandamy, she is going to have to initiate the clinch where Jermaine is so comfortable, she's going to light Holly Holm up with elbows, with knees. And um, sure, you can make the argument that uh, Jermaine hasn't beat anybody good, but she did beat the she did beat the brakes off the women she did fight, uh, just like she was supposed to. Um, her three losses, okay, they were to Vanessa Porto in her very first fight, who's a great grappler, uh, fights in Invicta. But uh, yeah, man, great grappler, which Holly isn't.
Julia Budd, who is a sensational wrestler, fights in um, Bellator, but a great wrestler, which Holly isn't. And Amanda Nunes, who of course is the best in the world, and also a great grappler, which yet again, Holly isn't. Um, also, we've seen the best Holly Holm, man. She's been training full-time at Jackson's her whole life, but and she is aging and regressing now, in my opinion, whereas Jermaine always had a part-time job, but now after winning that life-changing 50K in her last fight and now finally training full-time for a title fight, we're going to see the very best Jermaine Durandamy we've ever seen, man. So there's just a lot going for Jermaine here. I love her in this spot. I feel very confident here. My official pick is going to be Jermaine Durandamy via a third-round TKO. Decision wouldn't really surprise me, but I'm just feeling a... Um, I'm feeling a finish here, man. Um, Betting-wise, I do have 1.5 units on Jermaine Durandamy at minus 125. And I also have not Holly Holm wins in the distance in a two-unit parlay. But that's going to do it for the card, man. Getting into my nine plays here, man. It's funny. I wasn't expecting to have a lot of plays in this card, but it's just it seems like that's the way it always works out for me. So we got five uh, straight plays here and four parlays. Got 3.8 units on Dustin Boyer to win two units. Two units on Derek Brunson to win 1.4. 1.5 units on Jermaine Durand to me to win 1.2. 1.1 units on uh, Jared Brooks to win one unit. One unit on uh, the Sasaki Hase under two and a half rounds to win 1.25. Got um, two units in a parlay of the LaFlair over, parlayed with not Holly Holm in the distance to win 1.4. Got two units on a parlay of Randy Brown and Wilson Hayes to win 2.2. 1.2 units on a parlay of Makachev and Wilson Hayes to win one unit. And then a one unit parlay of the Makachev over parlayed with the Glenn over to win one unit. So that's going to do it for me, guys. Like I said, uh, check out the MMA Profits channel. I will link him in the description. We will be live on his channel Thursday night at 7 p.m. Going to be me and the boys breaking down some fights, having a good old time. So, um, yeah, man, thank you guys for the support once again. And above all, enjoy the fights.